all over britain there are archaeological sites that are too dangerous to access or excavate they could contain unique and valuable evidence of our past which if not investigated will be lost forever exa is a team of highly skilled archaeologists katie hurst in charge of excavation alice roberts doctor and expert in human bones. Meg Waters, geophysicist and digital imaging specialist. All experts in their chosen fields who are determined to get into these inhospitable places to forensically assess, survey and extract the evidence. The expedition leader will be me, Mark Davis, volcanologist, climber, caver and diver. This is archaeology on the very edge. This week we are heading deep underground and back through time to the very beginning of the Bronze Age. This is Paris Mountain on the island of Anglesey, just off the North Wales coastline. 200 years ago, this was the biggest copper mine in the world. Below this lunar landscape lie two mines, with 20 kilometers of old tunnels between them. Paris Mine is easily accessible thanks to the hard work of the Paris Underground Group. But Mona Mine has been off limits until now because of flooding. Recent archaeological discoveries have revealed the unexpected, that people were mining this mountain 4,000 years ago, back in the Bronze Age. Over 200 years ago, miners were hacking their way through solid rock here at Paris Mine in search of these wonderful copper veins. Now you can imagine their surprise when they found out that someone had been here before them. The EXA team will investigate new areas of the mines for the first time to answer the question, what was the scale and sophistication of mining here 4,000 years ago? Oh, that's a beautiful piece of wood here. The tunnels are potentially lethal and the threat of collapse is never far away. Well, I thought this was solid rock. A beam, a beam that's moving. Move to your left, to your left. We will penetrate the furthest reaches of the mine to gather crucial evidence to tell the story of the first industrial revolution of Britain. No mineralization on it. Dave yeah. Jenkins of the Paris Underground and Early Mines Research Groups has spent years working on the archaeology of the mine. So if I fetch the team down here, what could we do for you, your gold? I think it's some conception of the three-dimensional nature of this mine. There is, near to this, another place called the Grand Stope, which we haven't been able to get into easily. That's a new area. It's a difficult access, climbing and uh, crawling to get through to it. Can we not go from the, from the surface down to the no, ground? No, no. I think there's about five million cubic metres of spoil on the surface left by the later miners. And that's just buried everything. So the chances of hitting it from above are virtually nil. There are two mines here, Paris mine, which we're in, and a neighbouring mine, and they're linked just by one passage at depth, which was flooded until recently. And suddenly, for safety reasons, it's been drained out. We can now get down there. If we can get down and then make our way up 300 feet, we might be able to get to this new Bronze Age site. It's, it's unknown territory. Maybe we'll hit it, but it's a quest for the future. Meg will do a laser survey of the known Bronze Age area and put together the first 3D model of the Paris mountain mine system. Katie and Alice will head down to the Grand Stoke chamber to excavate there for the first time. Katie will be in charge of archaeology and Alice will take care of any artefacts that are discovered. Oh, I tell you what, my, my family spent years getting up to the mines and here yeah. I am going back down again. I, know. I headed down to the 120 foot level to check out the timbers. 
Their condition is so bad that the team will have to be kept to a minimum for safety reasons. There you go. It looks like I'm going to have to stay up top. It just gets progressively worse the further in we get. more enjoyable, eh? Meg and Katie spend some time underground to get a feel for the unique archaeology of an ancient mine. This is all Bronze Age fill here, and then it'd be really nice to get, see if we can find the other side of the okay. pit, and then we can measure how wide yep. it is. The Bronze Age began 4,000 years ago. Essential to the production of bronze was copper ore, and Paris Mountain was a major source. The Bronze Age miners dug shafts from the surface, following the copper veins into the mountain. After the mines were abandoned, they filled up with debris. Later, modern miners sank shafts and tunnels through the mountain, slicing through the Bronze Age mines. And make sure your harness is adjusted so it goes on over all your kit. Yeah. Mike is in charge of getting Katie and Alice to the excavation site safely. I'm going to stay up on top. There's a lot of uh, coordinating to go on, and uh, frankly, the, the less people that's down the mine, the, the better, really. Are you ready? I'm ready. I want to go with them, and uh, I would love to go with them, but, yeah, got to swallow it, haven't If that tunnel actually collapsed, and we had quite a lot of people in there, that, that would just be a nightmare, so I'm going to stay up top. The third time I've been caving. First time was um, down a very small cave in Derbyshire. The next time was down a slightly larger one and about 30 foot underground. Um, but today it's on a different league. I'm looking forward to going down actually because uh, the archaeology should be really good. I mean, it's, it's, nobody's ever looked at it before, so this is a really good opportunity to, to uh, get some good information out of it. The team are heading to the Grand Stope, a large chamber 120 feet underground, where they hope to find evidence of Bronze Age mining. Sparkly walls, it's really, it's really beautiful. The most amazing thing has just been the, the wonderful greens and blues of the copper pigments in the ceiling. That's fantastic. The mine may look beautiful, but it's truly extreme. It's one of the most acidic environments in the British Isles. Highly corrosive pools of acid are scattered throughout the mine. The 19th century miners found that metal tools and pipes instantly corroded. Their solution? was to use wood instead of metal, like these wooden pipes that have survived 200 years, pickled in an acidic copper solution. There we go. It's good it's just so lightweight, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Meg's mapping project is getting underway at the site where the first Bronze Age mine was found. This chamber was dug out in the 19th century. In the wall, the miners found evidence of what looked like an ancient tunnel filled with debris. The cross section contained wood, dating back nearly 4,000 years. The first target is this back wall here. With the Cyrex, we're actually scanning with lasers and we have historic maps and we have maps that have been made of the cave system in the last about 20 years or so. Uh, new technology can actually bring everything together. I've actually never been in a cave before, or in mines or anything like that, and, and I have actually never really wanted to. So I've been, I was a little <laughs> concerned this morning about what it would be like, but I, it's actually, it's really nice. It's, it, it, it's more open than I thought it would be. The access to the stope is 120 feet underground. Neither Katie nor Alice has ever been this deep before. It must have taken them ages to make these passages. Dave Wagstaff of the Paris Underground Group knows the mines like the back of his hand. 
He's a key member of the team. Just on your right hand side, you'll see the timbers Katie poking yeah. through. These are 19th century ones. That's right. He's a holding up the stacks of dead rock, as the miners call it. It's waste rock. They wouldn't take that rock to the surface. It was totally devoid of mineral. So they packed that at the side of the passages perfectly safely in their days. But the timber being the support for it, you know, that's now deteriorating after 150 years or so. Well, what's going to happen when, when they dry out properly? All these dead walls, these dead packs that the miners uh, have placed here will collapse in and possibly block the passage then and we won't be getting here again. So it's really, it's really vital that you come and have a look at all these that's areas right. before they start collapsing in. Yep. Industrial mining began at Paris Mountain in 1768. The mines controlled world copper prices into the early 1800s. An output exceeded 5,000 tonnes of pure copper per year. But life at the mine was tough. The tunnels were dug out using gunpowder and sledgehammer. Serious injury and death were common. Mining stopped around 1885 and most of the tunnels became flooded and inaccessible. We're going to go through a very dangerous area now. Right. You have to keep your heads and your packs extremely low, almost flat out crawling. Right. The timbers are very rotten and unstable. But you're convinced that we're safe down here today. That's right. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> Yeah, I can see the rubble above the timber. <laughs> That's Katie's legs disappearing down the crawl hole. You can't really see how it's all staying up, to be honest. Hi right, Katie, keep well down now. Lower and lower. Real good crouch down. Look up here on the right. Look, in there. Yeah. It's the kind of condition that's in Oh no, oh no. It's just soft. <gasps> just so you know. Okay. That was just like a chocolate cake. Yeah, it's like a sponge. You can put your finger in right. <sighs> but is that going to be safe holding up all yeah, of that rock above? It's taking it very easy. Okay. There's a wall on your right hand side. <sighs> these, the size of these boulders don't know, worry me. Katie and Alice are almost at the Grand Stoke Chamber where they'll be digging for evidence of Bronze Age mining. You can see the timbers on your left hand side. Oh my goodness. That's why we have to be very, very careful. If, if these timbers actually collapse, I mean, how much um, time have we got to get out? <laughs> I'm asking you as a concerned party. <laughs> sure. It depends which way it goes. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not? No, as long as we don't touch it, we'll be fine. Okay. 